द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह साल वी सौ भी शुरू हो गया है ये जनरल इलेक्शन का साल है असी फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम थोड़ी डिफरेंट कैंडीडेट्स नोड़े सामने रूबरू करा उन्होंने थोड़े सामने लैके आएंगे विद इन द स्टूडियोज और एल्सवेयर थ्रू आउट द कंट्री अज जो कैंडीडेट असी थोड़े सामने लैके आएंगे वो हैं श्री विपिन बाजवा जो कि कैलीफोर्निया स्टेट असैम्बली कैंडीडेट है फॉर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ट्वेंटी जी डिस्ट्रिक ट्वेंटी है ये मेन यूनियन सिटी फ्रीमोंट तो हेवर जैसी सिटीज़ को कवर करती है जिस दे काफ़ी कम्यूनिटी रही है विपिन जी यू आर वेरी वेलकम Thank you very much for taking out the time and speaking with our viewers. Vipin ji, Sanu, to see, sab tu pehla apne shokar de baare kuch dasho kya were you born in California? Zarur. Ah, uh, main born the days ho ya be area vich. Ji. Ada shahar hai Union City, California. Jada San Francisco the San Jose de gabe hai. मेरे मदर से फादर दोनों पंजाब तो इमरगेंट्स है uh, मेरा फादर है चांसू जटा तो हशियारपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट मम्मी गलचे तो जो पिंड है नवे शहर डिस्ट्रिक्ट मैं है यंगेस्ट फैमिली बच्च मेरे को दो व्डिया भैन भी है तो साडा फैमिली पैट बाबा मैं बोर्न से रेज हो लोकली तो मैं डिग्री की अकाउंटिंग से फाइनैंस बच्च साडे लोकल हेवर्ड स्कूलों तो शबो कम्यूनिटी कॉलेज तो कैलीफोर्निया स्टेट यूनिवर्सिटी ईस्ट पे तो उस बाद पब्लिक अकाउंटिंग फर्म पी डबल्यू सी तो ई वाई से काम किया एज एन ऑडिटर एंड कंसल्टेंट तो हम मैं पॉलिटिक्स में इन्वॉल्व होया सा डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी अपनी डिस्ट्रिक्ट रिप्रजेंट कर कैलीफोर्निया की स्टेट कैपिटल इन सैक्रमेंटो Mm-hmm. Uh, Vipin ji, uh, as you said, we understand that you are uh, a, a, a part of the Democratic Party. Yes. As, as we uh, show the candidates to invite, kar deya, and we uh, we want that Osanu not only about his campaign, de baare, but about his party's the jadi ideologies and jadi unade kuch unade principles and unade policies and usde baare Osanu janu karay. अज असी सब तो पहले थोड़े तो ये जानना चाहेंगे कि जब असी किसी रिपब्लिकन न उसके कोर प्रिंसीपल्स पूछते हाँ तो वह कहें स्टेट राइट्स इंडिविजुअल लिबर्टीज समॉल गवर्नमेंट अगर थोनू तो एज ए डेमोक्रैट ये सवाल पूछा जाए वो कोर प्रिंसीपल्स की दसोगे तो सू डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी है हैगी पार्टी ऑफ इक्वालिटी दोनों सोशल तो इकोनॉमिक डिस्टेंस में जितने डेमोक्रेट से रिपब्लिकन बखरे होंगे है भी की है रोल गवर्नमेंट का इस वैल्यूज में अफोर्ड कर डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी कहती है भी सा गवर्नमेंट की लौड़ है इंटरवेंशन कर जो सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक इनजस्टिस साकोनमी में एजुकेशन सिस्टम तो हैल्थ केयर में है रिगार्डलैस भी की है साडा जेंडर एज एथनिसिटी रिलीजन तो इकोनॉमिक वर्स वी एज डेमोक्रैट ऑल्सो बिलीव इन प्रोटेक्टिंग द बेसिक ह्यूमन नीड लाइक शेल्टर हेल्थ केयर फूड वाटर एंड एजुकेशन मोस्ट पब्लिक लैजिस्लेशन इन दिस कंट्री टू प्रोटेक्ट दीज रिसोर्स और सर्विसिज हैव बिन ड्यू टू डेमोक्रैटिक लैजिस्लेशन विपिन जी असी थोड़े तो ज़्यादा डिटेल्स में समझा बट सब तो पहल सू दसो कि एक एक टैग एक लेबल लगया जाता है कि जेडे डेमोक्रैट्स हैं वो सोशलिस्ट है डू यू एग्री विद दैट करैक्टराइजेशन I do not agree with that with that characterization. Mm-hmm. Um the reason I think that's come into play is with the uh, with the emergence of the progressive wing of the party. Uh universal health care, you know, and tuition assisted college isn't socialism. Uh the Democratic Party is just trying to assist the things I mentioned, the basic needs that we feel all people should have access to. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, our Well, we're not saying that we should control the means of production in every single industry. Mm-hmm. So, it is so w- w- what is socialism? What what exactly is socialism? Uh so socialism is defined as when the production and means of the economy are by the people and mm-hmm. for the people. Mm-hmm. Uh 
And, you know, we have socialist countries like Venezuela. We have Cuba, where when you look at any industry, you know, beyond the kind of the core of healthcare education, mm -hmm. uh, the government has a very large role in production. Um, and I think, I think with the U.S., we've adopted the progressive wing of the party has also adopted the democratic socialist name, um, uh -huh. which, in my opinion, is a little bit of bad marketing because I, you know, it has a meaning, but the word social, socialist, socialism has a negative connotation to it. So when people don't do their research, it, you know, they don't really differentiate between socialism and what democratic, what a democratic socialist is. Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, Vipanji, we, we need to understand that within the Democratic Party, there are uh, the diversity of opinions. And though Jedi clears are there some uh, uh, ideologies on the end, one, uh, something we call uh, the moderate Democrats, and then there's a progressive wing. So, see, Sanu, that's okay, key, key differences hage in the ideologies, itch, and what do the progressives stand for? question does Pandrasal Pella Puchihundi does no answer see either you are a Democrat or you are a Republican. Corn mm -hmm. Sadi Party both divided hai G. between progressive Democrats, the Baki Democrat, Genosi Labour Karta hai moderate. If you're not a progressive Democrat, I think most people automatically label you as a moderate. Uh, that's been my experience here locally, even if you know you prefer to call yourself just a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I think the primary difference between Democrat and progressive Democrats policy-wise is that Democrats still believe in allowing autonomy in the market and more economic freedom. But we recognize that we as a government should regulate and enforce policies Markets work to benefit the general population. So whereas a progressive might want absolute control of, of that segment, we offer a little bit more leeway. And I'll give you two examples of this. So mm -hmm. one is health care. Mm -hmm. uh, the progressive wing of the party wants a single-payer system where the government is a payer of all health care expenses, and we operate under that. And that's their pathway to insure the 2.7 million uninsured in California, the 27 million uninsured across America, mm -hmm. whereas a moderate would say, hey, uh, we have a system in place, let's aid that system with a public option so people have the option to buy in and not start over. Another, another market you can say is uh, rent. So, you know, in California we have a housing crisis, mm -hmm. rent, rent costs are astronomical. A moderate says, hey, let's work, you know, with apartments, developers, and make sure we have units allocated for low income and rent control that can go to the most vulnerable members of our society. Whereas a progressive Democrat will say, no, we're going to control and regulate the entire market, whether you're a single home or you're an apartment building with 500 people. It's important to recognize that, you know, we might have these differences in policy, but what brings us together as Democrats is we recognize that we uh, must act as a government to ensure people have access to these basic needs. Mm -hmm. And and the government the intervention the gal from time to time you know it was after Great Depression that uh, you know uh, Democrats under the leadership of FDR brought things like uh, Social Security or uh, even the Medicare Medicaid IA so that um, have been uh, you know the the need of the times and Republicans have refused to uh, have any government intervention at that at that stage is that what's the difference? No, you, that, that's completely true. So if we were to look at, you know, starting from FDR, and he mm -hmm. you know, kind of he had a lot of progressive policies, uh, for, especially for his time. And uh, we look at the establishment of all these government agencies, like you mentioned, Medicaid, Medi-Cal, and then we look at even all these other social programs that expand, expand beyond that. Mm -hmm. One thing is their inception was brought on by the Democratic Party, and that they've been carried forward and uh, held in their regard also by the Democratic Party as well. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you, you still believe in capitalism, don't you? I do. Uh, so I also, I guess this is, um, you know, a question where 
There's a word that one of our current Democratic candidates uses, which is human-centered capitalism. So I think our system, our economic system and our political system is what has allowed America to grow so much. Mm -hmm. And it's been working. But there's a few areas that I, you know, I, I guess I do agree with progressives on or have my different viewpoints. Uh, and one of those is we talk about capitalism and having a free market. Mm -hmm. But we have companies that are benefiting off public goods. Uh, and they're not paying their fair share into society or the community. And I'll give you a few examples of mm -hmm. that. So when you look at a bottling company like Nestle mm -hmm. or an energy company, they can the government will give them permission to mine on public property or they can use public water. When it comes to pharmaceuticals, and I began my career auditing pharmaceuticals, uh, a lot of them are recipients of, of uh, tax, tax, fund, tax funds you know, different agencies. So we actually contribute to the development of these drugs. Mm -hmm. But what happens is once they're developed, uh, we don't benefit. The consumer does not benefit. I think we need to eliminate some of these guardrails that allow businesses to not be competitive and also make sure that when the public is subsidizing a company, that we get something in return. It's, you know, not a, not a free subsidy or we aren't offering bailouts where the community does not benefit. Mm -hmm. uh now, Vipanji, I, I would like to ask you, you see, there, there uh, is, uh, you know, some, some founding principles of the country, you know, a model that this, this country works on. Uh, it, as you said, the uh, government is doing in corporations do uh, of fayde din di hai. But then uh, an average person thinks the government corporations do fayde din di hai, and the corporation turns around and creates employment. That, that, that's how wealth is generated. So, so do we understand, is, would you say, Democratic Party is anti-business as it is alleged by many? I would not say that the Democratic Party is anti-business, so I wanted to address the first item that you pointed out there, yes. uh, which is, you know, that sometimes we provide gov government funds to help with the creation of jobs, and that has happened. We saw it happen after the last recession when uh, Barack Obama came into office, and we, uh, you know, we offered assistance to car manufacturers, mm -hmm. and we kept them in business, kept the economy going, and it, and it, and it kept us from falling into a deeper recession. Mm -hmm. uh, there is room for that. I think, you know, my point was that when we're offering these different aids for services um, and we're, and it, you know, it's not for something to provide economic stability, there should be something that the, that the community can claw back on since it's the resources to, you know, develop that drug, the resources to do that mining are provided by us. Um, when it comes to the Democratic Party being anti-business, uh, no, that's, that's not the case. So if you were to look at the last, the modern era of the United States after World War II, mm -hmm. uh, over you know the last six decades or so, the v countries... V Vipanji, Vipanji, well. Vipanji, we will talk more about that after a short break to see Vekhtero, the way forward. The way forward is thoda fir to swagat hai. Aaj asi gal kar rahe hain California District 20 State Assembly de candidate Shri Vipan Bajwa ji nal. Uh, Vipan ji break to jaan to pehla tusi sanu dass rahe sige ki uh, why uh, the, it's not true that the Democratic Party is against business. Asi asi a agar vekhiye you know right from uh, after the Second World War, I believe the economy has done better under uh, democratic uh, administrations compared to Republican administrations. Is that true? Uh, that is true. So if you were to look at our history since then, the unemployment rate has been lower at the end of every Democrat's uh, tenure mm -hmm. since uh, John F. Kennedy took office. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, there's only been one Republican president who can say the same, which was Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at who's seen the highest amount of growth overall mm -hmm. um, from there and the top five presidents, four of those are Democrats. Uh, the fifth one is Ronald Reagan, who took presidency as after a Democrat, and Jimmy Carter is one of those presidents that is top five on economic growth under his administration. Mm -hmm. uh, in
in you know my lifetime, I've you know lived through a few presidents, and the most economic growth in our economy came under one uh, Bill Clinton mm-hmm. uh, with the tech boom, and then with Barack Obama after 2008 when he was sworn into office, we were in a recession, mm-hmm. and we've been on an upward trend since then. Uh, you know, of course, the market dips a little sometimes, but I think we still are feeling you know the effects from his administration today, and since 2016 or 2017 when he was sworn in, I think, you know, of course, Donald Trump, the numbers have continued in that direction under his presidency as well. So he'd be uh, probably the next president along with Reagan, Mm -hmm. uh, where we can say that he had a lower unemployment (laughs) compared to when he took office. Mm-hmm. But uh, we, we, uh, it cannot be denied that a uh, jada economic is boom President Trump they under apa vekreya is a jada trend. There were 72 weeks of straight uh, growth uh, under Obama when he left. Is that true? Yeah, um, and I and I agree. I mean, I think the frustrating thing sometimes is when you know the other side of our uh, political spectrum doesn't give credit to uh, the last president. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I mean, it's very easy to put all the data into a chart and see that there's been an upward trend and to recognize that pattern. Uh, and regardless of whether you agree with Donald Trump or not, I mean, it's also fair to give him credit and say, hey, like you know, Obama started this and you managed to continue it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think you know that's one thing from the other side that we don't hear is giving enough credit to the Democratic predecessor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vipan ji, uh, you know, th- this factor, is the about it, as you say, Gal Karange, you know, a very important factor uh, when it comes to economies is the mood, is the perception of the markets, right? A yeah. general perception hega that uh, under Republican administrations, the businesses do better. I don't know, uh, or tax rebate then, then it's because of that or for what reason. And that's why, you know, we need to address is Democratic Party against business? I think a few issues which I would like you to address today. One of the major is is welfare. You know, can then uh, the Democrat is tax and spend party or tax then because they want to keep these people on welfare who turn around and vote for them. I understand the only person, the only administration that has done something to check welfare abuse was uh, uh, Bill Clinton. Right in '96, he made that a requirement. Uh, he made a requirement of work to get welfare. Sanu, is welfare abuse the barish dasoge? Sure. Um, so you're you're right. First of all, Bill Clinton was the first president to implement a work for welfare program. Where uh-huh. you know, for example, if you, you know you wanted to qualify for a certain government aid and you were eligible to work, you might go to the local parks and recreation department and do some work. It was a way to reinvigorate. Uh, people get them up and moving and hopefully reintegrate them into the workforce. Mm -hmm. When it comes to welfare, uh, so, you know, we all know welfare is in place to help people as a safety net in our government when they're at their lowest points. Mm -hmm. And Democratic Party has supported that. Um, But when you look at fraud or corruption in in our welfare department, Mm -hmm. there, of course, is some uh, people that might hide income or falsify residency. Uh, But the thing is, it depends on you know is that how high is that amount as well um and one one aspect that people don't look at is there's also such thing as corporate welfare so everyone looks at welfare to benefit the people but no one looks at when we offer bailouts and subsidies to companies or when you know a co- oil company has an oil spill and taxpayers pick up the cost uh, when it comes to welfare both at a personal level and at a corporate level uh, and you know as someone that comes from an auditing and accounting background I think we as a government need more accountability over that <laughs> and when it comes to the Democratic Party having a label over you know being the party for welfare if you were to look at the top states that mm-hmm. are recipients of federal aid mm-hmm. uh, that goes into you know public charge and social programs, it's most of those states are ruby red. They mm-hmm. swing Republican. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and highest uh, taxpayers, the contributors are mostly the blue states. New Jersey, a, a small state, uh, happens to be the highest contrib- uh, contributor, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, in some cases you can argue that the blue states, which which are for, you know, are for Democrats and they're for these social programs and safety nets, mm-hmm. uh, are arguably voting against their self-interest, whereas the Republican Party, who kind of demonizes the, the blue states for these policies, are the ones that are receiving the benefits from these policies. Uh, you know, you know, uh, the... Uh, Vipanji, that, that's that's what we have been talking. That it's it's the sentiment uh, which has been created. I don't know how much truth there is to the sentiment or the perception that has been created. But uh, Democratic parties support for uh, you know things like this welfare or even on immigration. Now some of the things we hear are uh, are seen a bit far fetched by you know uh, normal. Uh, usual people who, who work hard for their living. Uh, you know, many people are afraid of that you are illegal immigrants, right? You are to advocate that they get a government health care, they get a free college, they get a driving license. What do you want to say about this? Sure. Um, so, I, you know, as, as I mentioned, with the Progressive Party, I think these issues have come to a greater standpoint in in our public debates. Um, So I guess to start off, when you look at illegal immigrants, there's different classes, right? You have illegal immigrants, and in in that you have groups that are innocent, such as a child who might be what we call a dreamer, right? Mm -hmm. Under the DACA Act, I don't think we should enforce any punishment on a person who came here arguably against their will because they didn't know what was going on, and this is the only home that I've ever known. Uh, When it comes to things like college and health care, and I'm sure we'll get into uh, more of, you know, my views on those systems overall, Mm -hmm. Um, I think with with health care, if we have a system where the cost is irrelevant, uh, it should be affordable whether you're a citizen or not. Mm-hmm. When it comes to providing subsidized health care and subsidized college, I do believe in supporting and making sure we have a system in place for citizens as a priority. So, so you, you, you advocate that it should be for uh, citizens only, not, not for the illegals? And so, you know, I, if, if it was up to me, and I'll, I, I'll just talk to you about both healthcare and free college now. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, college, in my opinion, when you look at the cost uh, and when it rises, as more government aid is available, uh, the higher that tuition prices rise because, you know, there's more money available, it's supply and demand. Mm-hmm. The chancellors also have their metrics to meet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think if we subsidize college directly, we would and subsidize the expenses, taxpayers would save money and we'd have more affordable college. And we'd also have reduced tuition, which anyone can pay for mm-hmm. and, and have access to, uh, regardless of if you're a citizen or not. So, so uh, uh, Vip, Vip, let, me, let me seek uh, more clarity on that. So yeah. is, that, uh, is that a departure from what the progressives are advocating? They're uh, advocating for free college. Uh, it is a bit of a departure because I'm not saying let's provide tuition-free college for everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at a solution where we can reduce the price of college, mm-hmm. and I think it'll work in the point where overall we as taxpayers and we as students will save money. Okay, okay. That, that and, sounds... And that is through directly subsidized colleges mm-hmm. uh, instead of having students as a middleman. And this is, I'm speaking from experience, uh, you know, I did have some financial aid and I worked a minimum wage job going through college mm-hmm. uh, and the financial aid system was very frustrating. And now speaking as someone that's actually worked on uh, public colleges as a client, looking at their financials, the one thing I can say is if we focused on cutting out the middlemen and the money we spend already on education and subsidizing those expenses, we'd have a cheaper system. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, for other, I know there's probably more people more fiscally conservative out there thinking, well, is that possible? Well, it is because we, the cost of college gets inflated when we have the middlemen, mm-hmm. which is us, the students. So we kind of eliminate the the person in the middle and all the bureaucracy of financial aid if we, as a government, fund the colleges directly. So, so you're advocating something like a voucher system in the primary schools? Uh, this is for colleges. Mm. Uh, for voucher system, I mean, for K through 12, that would be a separate issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vipanji, 
एक बड़ा वड्डा इशू विच विच माइट अगेन बी वन ऑफ द मेन इशूज इन दिस जनरल इलेक्शन इज इज द हेल्थ केयर सिस्टम इन दिस कंट्री इट्स इट्स एक्सपेंसिव इट्स एन अफोर्डेबल एंड जेड़ा इवन इवन द यू नो प्रेजिडेंट ओबामा ट्राई टू डू Uh, something on that but uh, still the system is not perfect there's there's lot uh, that that needs to be done what is the difference in the what what progressives are advocating and what somebody like uh, you who claims to be more moderate is advocating sure uh, so under the progressive system a uh, single payer is very simple uh, the government is a single payer of all health care expenses so like, when like you know, medicare you go to a doctor mm-hmm. you're getting a drug from a ph- uh, from a pharmacy everything is run through the government mm-hmm. and bernie sanders and the medicare for all act some of the primary benefits that they say there are to this system is one that admin costs will be reduced since the government is the only one handling it mm-hmm. and because of that uh, they and since the government is the the entity that's in control mm-hmm. they also have greater negotiations mm-hmm. in negotiating with healthcare providers and pharmaceutical companies on the cost of uh, receiving healthcare mm-hmm. uh i think you know for me when you look at those two areas that progressive say are the main benefits and looking at the first one for reduced administrative costs and it being less of a bureaucracy i don't think there's any single agency in government you can point to where you say they run efficiently and they run at a below the cost of the free market right mm-hmm. uh when you look at negotiations mm-hmm. the thing is you don't have to have 100% control of a market mm-hmm. to be able to have negotiating power mm-hmm. so if you look at expanding medicaid and medicare mm-hmm. um there we medicare and medicaid speak in business terms they take on the clients that would be deemed unprofitable by insurance companies mm-hmm. when you look at an actuary or report this is, you know, the elderly vipin ji i'm sorry we'll t- we'll continue this after a short break so we'll meet again ek choti ji break ke baad to se dekhte raho the way forward द वे फॉरवर्ड इज थोड़ा फिर तो स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह सो विपिन जी तुम सू दस रहे द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द प्रोग्रेसिव साइड ऑफ द डेमोक्रेटिक पार्टी इज एटीट्यूड टूवर्ड्स हैल्थ केयर एंड द मोर मॉडरेट साइड की तुम दस दसना चाहोगे सू yeah uh so just to continue off where i left off before the break mm-hmm. um so as i was saying medicaid and medicare we you know take on the the patients that the insurance company it might be too expensive for that patient to go through them whereas when you open up these systems Gee. you bring in people to to the to medicare and medicaid that don't cost as much to insure mm-hmm. which brings in more revenue to our public systems and then they can afford to insure and lower the threshold for who qualifies mm-hmm. which will result in more coverage overall mm-hmm. yeah so uh uh weapon uh, ji the the country hasn't come uh, th- there's no agreement on the perfect system that would that would take care of all the healthcare needs and uh, that's a continuing debate uh, it, let, let's talk on something which again is central to the differences between uh, the progressives the moderates and the republicans you know a vekhya gaya hai is mulk which there has been a wage stagnation right and there's a growing income inequality between the top earners and people at the lower rung right tusi ki is the wajah dekhde ho aur tusi ki is the solution dasde ho got it so as a as a democrat and you know going along with democratic party values uh-huh. uh you know i believe in continuing to up the rights of workers mm-hmm. uh in 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 our industries mm-hmm. uh income inequality one thing you look at is making sure workers have a right when it comes to the transparency of their income mm-hmm. uh this is you know pro- popular legislation which is floating around in different state legislatures around the country which is basically you can be transparent about what your earnings are um and the idea there is you know it helps bring transparency so people know what their work is worth mm-hmm. in addition to that i think with income inequality um one thing is from in the for individuals from lower income 
from background, mm -hmm. it's harder for them to accumulate wealth. Okay. Um, you know, so it's harder for them to have investments that make money. It's harder for them to buy a house, which, you know, it's a place you live. It's also an investment for everyone because uh, usually property wall is appreciated in value. Mm -hmm. I believe in more earned income tax credits for people at lower wage levels to help them with this so they can uh, begin to build more income through alternative means and they can begin to accumulate more wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is to make sure that when we hit something like a recession or the economy is taking a dip and we're facing a lot of replacement and workers, uh, make sure we have fiscal policies and social pro programs that are quickly enacted mm -hmm. uh, just to kind of get into the cause and right when the economy is taking a downturn so we can either help alleviate some of the even un unemployment displacement that we face. Mm -hmm. Vipanji, how, how do you view uh, raising of the minimum wage? Uh, so when it comes to, you know, the common number that is thrown out there is $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, let's raise the wage to fifth, minimum wage to $15 an hour. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I think someone picked a nice, clean, even, you know, ra number like 15, not too low, not too high. I think minimum wage should be addressed at the local level because, you know, whether that's going from federal down to state and then from state down to county and mm -hmm. even city, mm -hmm. uh, because let's face it, every region is different different and cost of living is different. So mm -hmm. if you look at, Al you know, where I live, Alameda County, and you go a little bit south, Santa Clara County, the cost of living is a lot higher. But then you go more towards the east, towards Sacramento and everything, and the cost of living is less expensive there. Uh, and then you look at middle America, the mm -hmm. cost of living there is a lot lower than mm -hmm. what it might be in so, California, so, so, right? So, so, so what you're saying is that there should not be a federal uh, minimum wage that every state has to meet, but it should be local, locally decided at the local level, at the state level. I mean, we do have the federal wage, and it's fairly low. And I mean, that's a pretty low threshold to where you know you'd hope no one is making that low amount of money. But I think at the end of the day, the states and cities and counties should adjust to what needs to be met. And that might not be fifteen dollars; it might be more, or it might be less in counties with less uh, lower cost of living. Vipanji. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole uh, issue which is like a huge issue of contention is, is climate control. Uh, the progressives came up with something like the, uh, the Green New Deal. How, how do you view the Green uh, New Deal? Uh, yeah, so, you know, my <laughs> first Excuse reaction is when you get the Green New Deal, your expectation is, uh, you know, going to be strictly around green energy, the environment, mm -hmm. and building up alternative sources of energy. Um, but the Green New Deal, uh, whether it's, you know, the local ones that have flourished from, you know, following suit from AOC's Green New Deal at the federal level, is they kind of have all these different areas built in, mm -hmm. uh, like health care, for example, or even minimum wage and different areas that aren't really related to the green economy. Um, I do believe in having a program, mm -hmm. whether it's at the state or federal level, level uh, and California is very progressive in this already, mm -hmm. uh, to have something in place where we can subsidize and help fund innovations and technology mm -hmm. for all trips. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Vipanji, are you there? I'm sorry, I, I think we have uh, lost connection. Asitano Mildia, a choti ji break the path. The way forward is Thoda Fertu Swagat hai, main Thoda host Harjot Singh. Uh, Vipan ji, asi Thoda tu uh, general, jadi Thoda uh, party di ideology hai, uh, principles and policies and oh samjhan di koshish kar rahe haan. Ek hoor jada bada divisive issue hai is country which, oh hai gun control da. Tusi second amendment nu kiwe vekte ho? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'd say my views are along with the Democratic Party. Uh -huh. I live in Alameda County, and we have uh, very good gun control, so we require a background check, mm -hmm. a federal level background check, and you leave the gun at the store, you pick it up 10 days later mm -hmm. after that check is complete. Mm -hmm. I also support recent legislation by California. Mm -hmm. um, there was two different ones. One is that if you are held twice in one year for a 5150, which is a hold for a mental health psychiatric issue, mm -hmm. uh, your gun license is revoked. And I also support extending the uh, the ban for offend, for violent offenders to um, when they can buy a gun. Uh, it was extended from one year to five years. Mm 
Mm -hmm. which I also support as legislation. Mm -hmm. And one other area I want to work on is enforcing uh, ghost guns, which are guns built from spare parts and not registered. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you see uh, some role for the government uh, uh, it, it, because we have seen, uh, you know, a tragedy after tragedy uh, caused by guns in this country. To see, j uh, you know, there are some uh, social issues. Just they are pretty diverse, uh, you know, their opinions taken by by uh, by the political parties. Uh, how do you uh, view uh, abortion? Abortion, I'm also along party lines, so I, uh -huh. I believe in the individual's right to choose. Okay. Okay, and actually, there have been some development in the LGBT uh, BTQ rights under President Obama or same-sex marriage. No Supreme Court ne acceptance diti hai. Uh, how, how do you view that? Uh, so California, since I, I mean I, I grew up, you know, locally here in the Bay Area, and I think we've always been more progressive for LGBTQ rights. And I, I think an individual, you know, two consulting adults uh, have the right to their freedom, and I and I think we as a government mm -hmm. uh, need to treat them equally as well, along with other adults. Weapon, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think are the main uh, issues facing your constituents uh, during this uh, election period? Got it. Uh, so we've knocked on a lot of doors. We've talked to a lot of voters. Um, main issues are, you know, housing is one. Mm -hmm. Average price of a home in my district is eight hundred thousand oh. um, dollars. And you know, a bigger issue along with that is displacement of long-standing members of our community. Uh, so I think we need to focus on building, working with developers, and building affordable housing and units that are affordable to rent to members of our community that might be facing displacement. Mm -hmm. Another issue which people across the country are facing is health care, mm -hmm. uh, whether someone's unemployed or un unqualified for medical, mm -hmm. or it's a business that, you know, is facing all these administrative costs. I think Democrats and Republicans agree we need health care reform, mm -hmm. uh, and we just differentiate in how to do that. Mm -hmm. Third issue is education. California is the lowest in metrics across the board, and it's been a heavy concern of the community members in my district. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is your district affected by homelessness that we see in San Francisco? We definitely are. Uh, so we, our district, there's actually two cities that have recently, um, one just approved a homeless navigation center, one has built it. Uh, because our population of homeless has been increasing rapidly over the last few years. Mm -hmm. And these homeless navigation centers hopefully will start to alleviate the issue. They're a place where the homeless can go to help provide them with social services and they even have temporary housing and kitchens available for them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Vipin, let me, let me ask you about something, uh, you know, we fear um, as of now. Do you uh, think there might be a war with Iran anytime soon? Uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if a full-on war will break out. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of funny when you look at, uh, you know, Donald Trump's tweets from when Obama was president. He was warning about a World War III due to Obama's actions mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, the one, the one of the reasons President Donald Trump was elected, he was very nationalist. And he even said in his inauguration speech, America first, mm -hmm. a lot of people from the Republican base liked him because, you know, he, he, he was saying he won't get involved in foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the war, I mean, I, you know, I know there's the developments happening right now with the plane and everything, and there was Canadian citizens. Um, I'm not sure entirely if if it'll break out into a war like where you know the news is kind of sensationalizing a bit but i'm sure tensions will continue to stay there as they always have been with iran mm -hmm. and, and and what do you think is going to happen with trump's impeachment uh yeah so that's, that's interesting um you know i think before I came into the interview i was briefly watching the news and mm -hmm. uh nancy pelosi still hasn't sent over the articles mm -hmm. i knew there was a senator uh republican senator who wanted to amend the senate proceeding rules so they can you know vote on not not taking the case or dismissing it and i think we're gonna have to wait till next week and see what the republican party decides to do either we drag it on have a trial and they you know subpoena democratic members as well <laughs> or you know i think we'll yeah we'll see how it plays out if you got a way to dismiss it yeah but i mean there hasn't been too much
much as you know from the last time we talked development there. Yeah, uh, Vipanji, if I, if I ask you, uh, yeah. can, can you tell us why did you decide to run, and and why do you think you're the best candidate for this position? Sure. Uh, so you know, every year, I, since I've been eligible to vote, I go to the ballot box where we receive our ballot at home, and we look at the candidates. Mm -hmm. And I've never been a candidate that I've had full confidence and faith in. Mm -hmm. uh, so after looking at the background of our elected officials, I felt I had a lot to offer from what I've learned in my line of work. I've worked with companies. I've also worked with the government. And to my knowledge, if I was elected, I would be the only person from my background serving in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I think we have enough career politicians there. Uh, we need someone that's number oriented, mm. uh, who can help manage the budget mm -hmm. and make sure our tax dollars are used properly and efficiently. And most importantly, I think, uh, you know, as my integrity, I don't accept any money from corporate or PACs. I think that's one of the biggest issues in our government. Mm -hmm. And I, that's a promise that I make to my constituents is I'll always repain ind remain independent-minded when serving. <laughs> Uh, that's very reassuring to hear. Sade Jedi community de bandin. Oh, US politics which kinna participate karange, ki koge to sunadi participation de barrage, and what will be your, uh, your message to them? Sure, so not just in my community, but in you know communities across America, even other countries, is stressing the importance of voting. So there's a cycle that goes on with mm -hmm. campaigns and elections. Mm -hmm. Candidates reach out to the people that vote, and for that reason, they, you know, there might be minority communities that don't have very high turnout, so they refuse to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and that cycle, as as a candidate takes that first step to reach out to that community, mm -hmm. that community's involvement grows. And also, it's the reverse is true when that community takes an active step to be involved. Uh, you know, our political elected leaders they take notice and they start to take your community seriously as well mm -hmm. i say to everyone uh you know i mean it's as simple as just making sure you do a little bit of homework and showing up to the ballot box or going to events where elected leaders are, are allowing them an opportunity to come to you like whether it's your place of worship or a community event and present themselves <laughs> Vipanji, we thank you for taking out this time today and speaking with our viewers. We wish you the very uh, best for this upcoming election. I believe uh, the primaries are in March, right? Yes, they are. And then if I advance, the general election will be in November. <laughs> A son, uh, California District 20, the candidate Vipan Bajwa. Just like ki Vipan Jane kya ki to see Jina participate karoge, to see Jina Samne auge, unahi jeda government system, hai, jeda uh, political system, hai, o todi needs to identify karega, tonu reach out karani koshish karega, todi jedi problems and unanu solve karani koshish karega. Again, uh, as it on encourage karange, March which a primary hagi hai, to see. बाहर आओ तो उसी वोट पाओ और अपने जेड़े कम्युनिटी दे एक कैंडिडेट दें वेपन बाजवा इन्होंने सपोर्ट करो वेपन थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी हर जॉब यू वेलकम ऐसी सारा आज दशो सिवेक देरो द वे फॉरवर्ड